look at page 236. Are you washed in the blood? Let's worship the Lord this morning.
God this morning, we serve a real God. We serve a God who is alive, a God who can do great and mighty things. Father, go ahead and worship Him this morning. Go ahead and worship Jesus. That's what we came here to do. We came to lift up the wonderful name. Let God hear your voice. Come on. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to worship the Lord this morning. Lord Jesus, we honor you. We thank you. We worship you. We praise you, God. We give you glory. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for being with us here in the house of the Lord as we worship and give you glory. Oh God, receive our worship. Receive our praise this morning. Give us life, oh God. Give us energy, oh Lord God, as we love you and worship you and praise you. We thank you and give you all the glory that we can live in the very presence of Jesus. We can live in the very presence of Jesus this morning. We can worship you and give you glory and honor. Thank you, God, for what you have done. Thank you for dying for our sins and rising again to set us free. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. As you begin to sing, just worship God. Don't stop worshiping the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
we've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. What a wonderful song. That song's been in my heart, so I had to had have her sing it for me. <laughs> Who was it for? It was for me. I needed it. <laughs> well, if you all make me choose the songs, I'm going to choose it for what pleases me, right? <laughs> so that's just the way we're going to do it. You can zoom in at least and then turn it. I'm going to help you all. Don't worry. <laughs> But this time we we'll received a Sunday morning tithe and offering. All Christians do pay their tithe and give an offering. And we thank you for your faithfulness and we thank you for your support to the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jimmy, would you help us this morning? Thank you. Father, we ask you to bless this offering today. Bless each one of our that are giving in. Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> 
part of your family, the royal family of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning. We give you all the praise, all the glory and honor, God. You're so wonderful. You're so loving. You're so holy. And we just want to thank you for saving us, for redeeming us, oh God, and for bringing us into your family and to make us a child of the King of all kings. Bless this service. Accomplish your will this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> Amen. What a blessing to be a child of God. To know God in reality. To know that we serve the living God. He was dead. But not no more, right? He's alive. Thank God that Jesus rose from the dead. The Bible says on the third day he came out of that tomb, declaring all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And I want to read to you this morning from 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. Aren't you glad you don't have to turn to your Bible anymore? It's right up there. I'm sure it's going to come up eventually. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> I told we'll get it right. <laughs> well, thank God for Ashley, my wife, and Nathan. They're working that stuff. And get it together, put it together so we can have it. First Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. He said, To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth in him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. And the stone of stumbling, and the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I want to use verse 1 as our text. I will talk about some of the other verses, but I use verse 1 as the text this morning where he said, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Using the part where he said, but chosen of God and precious. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach in a message entitled, see I can't, I can't surprise you anymore, the title is already on there before I even say it. <laughs> I want to preach about chosen of God. Chosen of God. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Mark, would you please pray? Thank you. Father, thank you for our pastor. Father, thank you for each soul that is present. Father, touch each one heart according to the individual needs. Father, let us take this message, apply it to our life, and do which is pleasing in your sight, giving you all the glory. Father, bless the message and the messenger in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you all for being here this morning being in the house of the Lord, and um, just pray that God will, you know, give you what you need. It may not be yes. what somebody else needs, but you may have a specific need in your life, and it may not be about even what I'm preaching about, but you're in the right place, amen? amen. In the right place at the right time, and, and God can talk to you this morning as the Word of God is being preached. And so, I want to preach about chosen of God, and in this Bible reading, that I read to you, speaks of Jesus and of those who believe in him, his disciples or his followers. And he used the word chosen to describe us. He said in verse 1 that Jesus 
was chosen of God and precious. And in verse 9, he said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. So he used the word chosen as an adjective really to describe both Christ and those who belong to him. And the word chosen, the word chosen can be defined as someone who have been selected as the best or most appropriate. Amen? It's like when you're getting ready to, to marry somebody. You chose that person because in your mind they're the best, right? Out of all the billions of men in the world, you chose that one. <laughs> all the, my billions, whatever, how many millions or billions of people out there, I don't know, whatever. You chose that woman because in your mind, in your heart, they suit you best. And so it means having been selected as the best or most appropriate. It also means one who is the object of choice or of divine favor or a person elected. I'll leave it as that. <laughs> verse th and the next one, verse 3. The next one, it means to be selected or marked for favor or special privileges. And so in other words, what he's saying here that a person who is chosen or someone that has been chosen means that, that you love them. They've been loved. Or, or you don't choose things that you don't like. Amen? You don't choose things that you don't like. So uh, rest assured this morning, somebody like you. <laughs> you say, well, I don't know. I don't know, preacher. All these people are, <laughs> are against me. All these people find a fault in me. Well, somebody like you this morning. Somebody loves you this morning. Amen? Somebody loves you because you're chosen of God. It means that you're loved. It means that you're valued. God have value. God placed value upon your life when He chose you to be His servant. And it means also that you have a purpose, that God has a purpose for you. Amen? And so thank God this morning that we can leave this place in the house of the Lord knowing that we have been chosen by God for a specific purpose and that our life have value. Aren't you glad this morning you are not just here to pass your time and then die and then go off into eternity to the unknown? Boy, you're all quiet. <laughs> you say, preacher, the reason why we're quiet, we don't understand what you just said. <laughs> or we're not focused. <laughs> We're not focused. But I'm talking about being chosen. God chose you for a purpose. Amen? God chose you because He loves you. God chose you because there is value to your life. Don't look at yourself as someone that is insig insignificant and you don't have a purpose and you can't do anything. That's a lie of the devil. Yes, you can be somebody. Amen? Yeah. Yes, you can do something with your life. Yes, you can make a difference. Yes, you can have an impact in this world if you chose to because God has a special place in His kingdom for you. Chosen of God. But this morning, the message really will be focused on Jesus. I share that part because I want you to know that you are important to God. However, though, the message this morning I'm preaching to you is completely 100% focused on Christ as verse 1 as we go into verse 1 where he speaks of Christ or verse 4 I should say where he speaks of Christ he said to whom coming as unto a living stone disallow indeed of men but chosen of God and precious and so most of the Bible, Bible reading is focused on Christ he said he was disallowed indeed of men and the word disallowed mean to be refused or to deny truth or, valid, or validity of someone, to disown them. And we know that even unto this very day, Jesus is rejected by many people. You try to invite them to church, oh, I don't, I, don't, I don't do that stuff. Or you try to share Christ with them, oh, I don't want anything to do with Christ. Or you try to get them to understand that Jesus is the only way to the kingdom of God. But yet, they reject that knowledge and say, well, there are many different ways that we can get to God. But that's not what God said in His Word. God said there is only one way to the kingdom of God. There is only one truth, as the Bible tells us, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to heaven or no man can come to God but by Him. Amen? He is the only way to God. And yet, we find into, unto this very day that people still disallow Christ. They still refuse Him. They still reject Him. But they're doing that to their own loss or to their own hurt or to their own peril because without Jesus, 
No man can make it into heaven. Amen? Amen. He is the only way. He is the only door to the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us that even when Jesus came to his own people, to the Jewish nation, he said in John chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, John chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, he said he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Showing us from the very beginning that when Jesus came to his own people, the Jewish people, they did not want to accept him. They didn't want to receive him. They didn't want to let him be what God sent him to be. God sent him to be the light of the world, to be the Messiah, the one that will redeem them in the world, the one that will teach them the ways of God, and the one that will take them to the kingdom of God. But they rejected him. Amen? They rejected him, and they crucified him, and they, and they, and they said, we don't want anything to do, to, to do with this man. Pilate said, what shall I do with this man who is called Jesus, the king of the Jews? They said, let him be crucified. Let him be crucified. Get rid of him. We don't want anything to do with Jesus. But you see, not because someone rejected Christ, that doesn't mean that he wasn't chosen of God. Amen? Amen. Not because the world reject Christ, that doesn't mean that God did not choose him. And so that's what I'm talking about this morning. The world may reject Jesus. People may reject Jesus. You that are listening online, maybe say, you may say, you know what? I have my own way of serving God. I don't want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I don't even believe that Jesus is God. You may reject him, but it doesn't change the fact that God chose him. Amen? It doesn't change the fact that he's still the chosen one, that he is the one that God the Father chose and sent into the world to be the sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. It doesn't matter this morning what people think about Jesus. Jesus is still the chosen one of God. Amen? Amen. Thank God this morning. He may be rejected of men, but he's still chosen of God. Rejection of man has nothing, has no lasting impact on the child that God had chosen. Jesus was rejected by the Jews and he was crucified by the Gentiles on the cross. But the Bible tells us on the third day, God raised him to life again, showing us that no matter what men do, it doesn't have a lasting impact on Jesus Christ. Even to this very day, there are so many that are adamant about rejecting Christ. They don't want Christ in the school. They don't want Christ in our government. They don't want Christ in the society. Some people don't even want to talk about Jesus in their family, but it doesn't change the fact that God still chose Jesus to be the answer to every problem in our society. Amen? Amen. He's still the chosen one this morning, regardless of what men do. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 through 11, that after God raised Jesus from the dead, this is what God said about his son. He said, wherefore, in verse 9, wherefore God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. So God was showing the world that you may reject my son. I've sent my son into the world to die for you, to save you, to give you eternal life, to give you forgiveness of sin, to cleanse you, to wash you, to make you a brand new person. And you may reject him and you may cast him off. You may be, as the Bible said, they disallow him, they disowned him. They didn't give him the identity that God wanted to get, that God sent him, that he is indeed God. God manifested in flesh and the world may reject him, but it doesn't change the fact that God chose him. Amen. It doesn't change the fact this morning that Jesus is still the chosen one. He said God highly exalted him. God gave him a name that is above every name. He said at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow. Every person one day will have to bow before God and give an account of what they did with Jesus. Amen. Every man, every 
woman will one day have to bow before God and say, God, well, I accept your son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. And because of that, I have access into heaven. Or they will have to say, God, I rejected your son. And now I'm cast into the lake of fire for all of eternity. The choice is absolutely unto, uh, absolutely ours this morning. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is still the chosen one of God. Amen? Amen. Rejected of man has nothing on us because we are chosen of God. God loves us and God thinks that we are valuable just like he chose Jesus and thought that Jesus will be the or establish him to be the one that, that will bring hope to the entire world. He's chosen of God, verse 1. Cho or verse 4, chosen of God. Just to save the world. The first thing is Jesus was chosen of God to save the world from their sins. Man cannot atone for his own sins. As we know, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That every person that come into this world came in as a sinner. Amen? Amen. Every person that was born into this world, born with a sinful nature, and that's the reason why we so quickly drift into all these ungodly things. And there is no way that a person can atone for their own sins because they're not qualified. Amen? They're not qualified. They're stained with sin. And you can wash... Thank you, baby. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. That was ordained praise. Amen? The price, all right, that's enough. Like that's going to shut her up. Huh? <laughs> See, man cannot atone for his own sins. The price of sin was too high for mankind to pay. He could not redeem himself. He needed a redeemer. Someone qualified to die in his place. And Jesus was the only one qualified. And so God, his father, chose him and sent him into the world to die for the sins of mankind. He said, preacher, what does that have to do with me? Well, that means if we couldn't save ourselves and Jesus was chosen to be our sacrifice, that means we owe him everything. Amen? Yes. We owe him everything. We owe our life to Jesus because of him. We are saved this morning. And if you're not saved, you know, a lot of times people come to church. And they may be brought up, into, brought up in a Christian home, but they're not saved. Amen? They're not saved. You cannot be saved until you confess your sins to God and repent of it and turn from it and accept Jesus Christ into your life to become your Lord and Savior. There is no salvation unless you humble yourselves and turn away from your ungodliness. And so even though you may be in church and even though you may be in a Christian family, if you have not accept Christ into your life and walk away from your sins, you are not a Christian. If you die you will not make it into the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen? It's my responsibility to tell you that. And I don't know who's listening online. My responsibility to tell them that also. Amen? You can't play the game and expect to enter the kingdom of God. You got to be real. Amen? You got to be real. And so he was the only one qualifying. So we owe Jesus. We owe him everything. In Acts chapter 3 verse 26, he said, Unto you first, Acts Acts chapter 3, verse 26. He said, Unto you first, God, having raised up His Son, Jesus, sent, sent Him to bless you in turning every one of you from His iniquity. This is what God sent Jesus to do. He sent Jesus to bless us. He chose Christ, sent Him into the world to die for our sins, raised Him again from the dead, and He sent Him to turn you away from your sins. God wants you to be free from sin this morning. You cannot enter into the kingdom of God with sin in your life. Amen? There will be no access granted to you if you're still living in sin. And so God let us know He had chosen Christ to be the sacrifice He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die that horrible death on the cross, to descend into hell, to pay the penalty of sin, and then He raised Him again from the dead to show us that he is indeed the chosen one and that we through him can have forgiveness of sins amen and so thank god this morning that we don't have to wonder where can i get forgiveness of sins how can i be cleansed from my iniquities how can i have assurance of eternal life there is no wondering there is
is no guessing. All we have to do is accept the chosen one of God, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There is no guessing. There is no wondering. Thank God for the assurance of salvation that every person can know that they are saved. Every person can know that they've been forgiven if they trust in Jesus Christ and turn away from their ungodly ways. Amen. Amen. Thank God for forgiveness this morning that God chose Jesus. He's the only one this morning that can set us free. He was chosen to be the sacrifice of sin. But not only that, he was also chosen to be our eternal high priest. Now remember I said, this whole message is about Jesus. Amen. It's about Christ, the chosen one. The chosen of God. And though the world may reject him, it doesn't mean a crying thing to God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean a crying thing to God. You can reject him. You can cast him off. You can disallow him. You can reject him. You can refuse him. It does not matter. Jesus is still the chosen one of God. Amen. Amen. You may say, I have my own way and I will do things my way. And you have that right and you can do it your way. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, Jesus is still the chosen way to heaven. Amen. Amen. And so we have to accept that if we will make it into the kingdom of God. But he is the chosen. He was chosen to be our eternal high priest. The reason why when we pray and make our requests to God, we said, I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. It is because it is only through Christ to where, through Christ, we can have access to God. Amen. We do not have access to the Father except we come through His Son. Amen? So, and under the Old Testament, man did not have direct, direct access to God. They had to go through the priest. The high priest was there, and he was the one that represented the people. Especially when it comes to atonement of sin and offering the yearly sacrifice, he was the only one who was, who was allowed into the Holy of Holies. And he had to go in there once a year. First he had to offer the sacrifice for his own sin, and then he will take the blood and offer it as a sacrifice or an atonement for the sins of the people. He was the only one that could do that. They had to go through a high priest. He stood as a mediator between God and the people. He offered the atoning sacrifice and made intercession and prayers for them. The high priest was chosen by God to represent the people. And so for us as Christians, Jesus once again was chosen by God to be our high priest. Amen. Amen. He was chosen by God to be our high priest. He is the best high priest because he sits on the right hand of the Father and he is the only begotten Son of God. Amen. He is God's Son, so you can't get any better than that. Amen. Yes. You can't get any better than that. You need something from someone, you don't go to the servant. If you go to the Son, you got a better chance of getting what you want. Amen. And so Jesus, right there, by the right hand of His Father, whatever we need this morning, all we have to do is call on Jesus because He is our chosen high priest. Amen. God chose Him. God established Him. God placed Him in that position that if any person have a need, all they have to do is go to the high priest that God selected. Amen. Thank God this morning that we have an eternal high priest that we can turn to. We can go to Jesus and say, Lord God, I need a miracle. I need a blessing. I need this. I need that. Whatever the need is, all we have to do is go to Jesus and Jesus will take it to the Father for us. Amen? Amen. Thank God for eternal high priest. Jesus has no flaws and nothing to hinder him from getting access to the Heavenly Father. Bring your request to Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25, speaking of Christ, Hebrews 7, 25, he said, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus, the Bible said, this is his passion. This is his drive. This is his drive in life, is to make intercession for you. To make intercession for us. Amen. This is his purpose. He sits there as the high priest of God, waiting on our prayer request, waiting for us to come to God and say, God, I need some peace right now. 
God, I need some joy. God, I need some restoring. I haven't been with God where you want me to be, Lord Jesus. I need you to restore me. He's waiting, amen. He's waiting on you this morning. He is our eternal high priest. He was chosen by God for that purpose, amen, to give us, to be, to stand there before the Father and to make intercession for us. What are you waiting for and what do you need this morning? Come, bring it to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Don't sit there with your needs. Don't sit there with your case. Bring your request to Jesus. He is chosen for this purpose. Amen? Amen? This is his job. You say, well, I don't want to burden the Lord. This is his job. Amen? Amen? I don't want, to, I don't want to, to nag him. This is his job. Amen? I don't want to bother him. This is his job. Amen? Amen. This is his job. The high priest's job was to go and make intercession for the people. He didn't have any other job. Amen. He wasn't out there killing the sacrifice. He wasn't out there uh, talking to the people. His job was to go before God for the people. Amen. His job wasn't to bury the dead or to work in a job or do anything. His job was to stand there and the people bring their request. He'd take it to God. Amen. That was his job. Jesus' job is to listen to our prayers. Jesus' job is to listen to what we have need of. You have a problem. You have a concern. Bring it to Jesus this morning. This is his job. He was established and chosen by God for this purpose. So bring your case to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're not bothering God. He's waiting to hear from you. He's waiting to hear from you this morning. He was chosen not only to be the sacrifice of our, for our sins and to be our eternal high priest, but he was also chosen to advocate for us. And the word advocate means to represent us in legal matters before God. Amen? An advocate, a lawyer, or one that advocates, he goes on our behalf, represents us. If by any means we break the laws of God, and judgment is sure to come, we can always call on Jesus to help us. Amen? We can always call on Jesus to help us. Jesus is the only one qualified to go before God and to plead our legal matters before the Lord. You know, when a person is in deep trouble with the law, or if they are caught, in, caught up in a matter that is too much for them, and too much for them to handle, the most number one recommended thing is for them to get a lawyer. Amen? To get a lawyer to represent you. I remember when someone tried to accuse me. It doesn't always have to be your fault. <laughs> it doesn't have to be your fault. I've always been accused for uh, being sued for millions of dollars. Like, they're going to get millions of dollars out of me. <laughs> Amen? Come on now. <laughs> they have to wait a lifetime. They'll probably die before I pay them that kind of money. <laughs> But they were suing me for millions of dollars, and the first thing that was recommended to me was to go get a lawyer. Go get a lawyer because you need someone that is qualified to represent you in this matter. Amen? You need someone that is qualified to go before the judge. The judge is not going to hear you. Amen? The judge is not going to hear you. He's not going to listen to that lawyer, that, that advocate, that one that represents you, your representative. And so the re most recommended thing was to go and get you a lawyer to represent you. And so when we are dealing with legal matters concerning the laws of God, this is a legal thing, amen? When we break the laws of God, when we sin against the Lord, or we violate the commandments of the Lord or break the laws of God, we need someone to represent us. And thank God Jesus was chosen to be our lawyer, amen? We have a lawyer. Aren't you glad you don't have to pay him? <laughs> Amen. He's free. Amen. Lawyers can be expensive. But thank God God gave us a lawyer that we can, we can use for free if we break the laws of God. Someone to represent us before the judge. He is the only one chosen by God to do this for us. So not only should we bring our concerns to God because he's our high priest and he can represent us before the Lord. We should bring our case to Jesus also. Amen. We should bring our matters of things if we feel that we have sinned against the Lord or we have done things that are displeasing to God. Thank God this morning we had someone that can 
plead before us. Uh, someone that can go before the Lord when judgment is coming down and said they're guilty. They broke my law. They have disobeyed my commandments and judgment is sure to come. Jesus can said, give them another chance. Amen. Give them another chance. I forgive them. I, I, uh, I will cover them by my sacrifice and the blood that I shed. I will use that as a covering for their judgment. And so thank God this morning we have someone to advocate for us. His name is Jesus and he was chosen for this purpose. Amen. Amen. So don't worry about your legal bills. Now, this is not a license to go breaking the laws of God. But if you have, if you did, if you find within yourself there is guilt plaguing your mind, you have someone to help you. Amen? You have someone to help you before God. You can't go before the Father and plead your case. You need a lawyer. Amen? And I'm telling you here, you have one. You have a lawyer. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He will represent you. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, he said, My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. So God doesn't want us to sin. Amen? He said, And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Thank God this morning that we don't have to live with sin in our life. We don't have to live with the guilt with a guilty conscience. Amen? We don't have to live with our mind plague with all those things that we have done in our youth, in our past, but it all can be forgiven this morning. Amen? It can all be forgiven this morning. He said, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. The only one chosen to represent you legally before God is Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God, and He is the only one that God will listen, listen to this morning. You say, well, I have my own religion. I can go through this, and I can go through that. <laughs> Jesus is the only one God will listen to. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the only one God will listen to. He's the only one that is certified by the, the board, who is it, the, the law, the bar, whatever. <laughs> He's the only lawyer that is certified for the universe. To represent mankind. He's the only one that is certified by God to represent mankind. No one else can go before God to represent mankind. Jesus is the only one. Amen? Amen. So this morning, if you have legal matters, when it comes to the Word of God, call on Jesus and He will help you. He's the only one chosen to die for the sins of the world and to forgive mankind. He's the only one chosen to be the high priest to represent us in our, in our concerns and our, uh, and, and our, and our and requests before the Lord. He's the only one chosen to represent us in legal matters that are pen, that where, where judgment is pending to give and grant forgiveness. And the final thing is he's the only one chosen to be the eternal ruler of the world. Amen? Amen. He's the only one chosen to be the eternal ruler of the world at the end of this time. God will set up His eternal kingdom upon earth. A kingdom that will be ruled by Jesus. And this is why the Bible calls Him the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. is because He will be the one that will rule the eternal kingdom. Jesus is chosen to rule the kingdom of God. And He made provision for us this morning to rule and to, re rule and to reign with Him. He chose us, as the Bible tells us, and I said there's two things, two people that he recommended that are chosen. Number one, Jesus is chosen. In verse 4 he said, he's chosen of God. In verse 9 he said, but ye are a chosen generation. You're a chosen generation. So Christ is chosen by God to rule the world, but the Bible said he made provision for us. That if we will believe in Him and accept Him as our Lord and Savior, if we will dedicate our lives to Christ and, and to live a daily life that is pleasing to God, then we also are chosen to rule with Him. And so there is a place for us also in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. To where we will rule and reign with Christ. And, and that's a wonderful thing tonight or this morning that God made provision for us. Not only that God give Jesus rulership over the entire world, but through Him we have 
of a kingdom. Amen. As we were singing, I am a child of the king. I have been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. I have been chosen by God to live with him for all of eternity. And I have that assurance in my life. And you can have it also. Everyone that have accepted Jesus Christ can have that assurance that one day they will rule and reign with Christ for all of eternity. And as you come to the instruments, we will wrap it up this morning. He said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth praises of him who had called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. I'm preaching about chosen of God. Chosen of God. God is preparing a chosen group of people to rule and reign with him. Will you be a part of that group? Will you be a part of that chosen generation that he's talking about? We know that God already chose Jesus. He's going to be the ruler. Now he's looking for a people that will rule and reign with him. Will you be a part of that kingdom? You say, well, preacher, I'm already saved. I understand that. But will you continue in the race? Amen. Will you hold fast your profession unto the end? Will you stay steadfast in your faith and trust God all the way to the end to where when you depart from this life, you can hear Jesus said, Well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You see, only those who are willing to accept Jesus into their life and follow him faithfully every day will be a part of that eternal kingdom. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, or the whole part of that, that passage deals with, with um, the kingdom of God, the wedding banquet, as he called it. And he said, he sent a servant out. The wedding was ready. The food was prepared. Everything was ready to go. And the Bible said, the Lord, the king, he sent out a servant to tell them, come, everything is ready. Come. I've already prepared it. I've already chosen the king. I've already chosen the place. I've already chosen the banquet. I've already chosen everything. Now I'm looking for a people that will rule with me. And he said he sent out, but they would not come. He sent out a servant to get the people to come, and he said, we will not. He sent them out again, and he said they made light of the matter. They blew him off. They said, oh, we don't want, we don't want you, Jesus. Same thing the Jews did. He said, to whom coming unto a lively stone disallowed indeed of man that disallowed him. He said, Jesus, we're not going to believe in you. Jesus will not follow you, will not accept you. They made light of the matter. Some took his servants and they abused them. They mistreated them and they killed them. The Bible said the king, the master, was wroth. He was mad. He said, you go out. Go out there and get as many as you can. He said, for many are called. Many are called. He said, but only few are chosen. Amen. Many are called, but only few are chosen. I'm talking about chosen of God. Yes, God chose Jesus to be all those things that I spoke to you. He was chosen to be the sacrifice for sin, chosen to be our high priest, chosen to be our advocate, and chosen to rule the world. But now he's looking for a chosen people. Let's not make light of it this morning. Let's not to just give him just a little bit of our time. Let's not just give him a 2%. 5%. Let's be that chosen people that will give him our all this morning. Amen. As you bow your heads and close your eyes in reverence to the Lord, he said, for many are called, but few are chosen. Let's be that chosen people. I'm talking about chosen of God. God chose Jesus. Now Jesus wants to choose you. Will you allow yourself to be chosen? Will you give him your all this morning? Would you surrender it all to Jesus and say, Lord, I will be a part of that kingdom. I will devote my time to you. I will devote my life to you. I will devote my energy to you. I will give you of my substance. I will give you of everything because, God, I want to be a part of that kingdom. This morning, as you begin to play and sing, it's time to pray. The altar is open. Don't sit there if you know you need to pray. Come to Jesus. Come to the altar. Let's all find a place to pray this morning. Let's come. Let's come to the one who was chosen to do whatever you need. Father, I preach your word now. I pray, God, that you will accomplish your will. You will accomplish your will here in this altar service. We thank you and give you all the glory and praise. We magnify you, Lord, thanking you, God, that we can be chosen.
reject him. And though people may disallow him, that doesn't mean a crying thing. In eternity, there will only be one, one chosen, to, to do all these things. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we'll close that. We'll close the service this morning. But remember, we'll be here tonight at 6.30. We invite all of you to come. Let's come and worship God. Let God do something great for us. Amen? At this time, we'll close. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the service. We just want to give you all the praise and glory and honor. Continue, God, to help us as we serve you. Keep your hand upon us and bring us back at the appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray.